Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I've got five super easy farmhouse rustic Valentine DIYs to share with you that you can leave up year round. So if you want to know how to make them, stick around. i show you how. Thank y'all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Okay, for this first one, I'm going to use a 9-inch heart and I'm going to use a 4-inch heart. And I got both of these at Hobby Lobby. And then I'm going to paint these with Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral. And I'm just going to paint the front and the sides on these. And just get them coated pretty well. Next, I'm going to take this plaque that I got at Hobby Lobby, measures 18 by 10, and I'm just going to glue both of my hearts onto this board. Just kind of eyeball how you want them, and then I'm going to attach them with wood glue. Just get a pretty good bit on this, and then we're just going to weight this down with something heavy to set on top of them. Next, I got this bicycle chain on Amazon. I'll give you the link for it in the description below. And I'm just going to go all the way around both of my hearts to connect them. Just kind of lay it out exactly how you want it because you do have to kind of spend a little bit of time getting this straightened out. And I'm going to start in the curve of the heart first and glue it in. And then I'm going to start gluing the rest of it in. And you can do any pattern you want to with this. I'm just going to go around both of them and just connect them. And then I'm going to start with some E6000 glue right in the center part. And I'm going to glue that one in first and let that set for a minute. And then I'm going to put a little hot glue just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to come around and I'm going to start attaching the rest of the chain all the way around both sides. And I'm going to use E6000 glue on this. And then I didn't use it hot glue on this side, but I did use hot glue on the rest of it. But if you're just going to let it sit there to dry, you don't even need the hot glue. Just kind of get all the little links, you know, pretty straight. Then I'm just going to glue straight across the bottom. Glue that one down. And then I'm going to go around the other heart exactly like I did the other one. And you can remove some of these links if you don't want this many links. You just have to um, tap them out. But I ended up using my whole chain on this project. Next, I'm going to distress both the board and the hearts with the Waverly Antique Wax. And I'm just going to use a chipboard and a paper towel, kind of get the excess off of there, and then kind of lightly go over the hearts. And you can even add as much or as little distressing as you want. I ended up coming back in and adding a lot more. But I'm just going in one direction on these, and then on the board, I'm going to do the edges of it, and then I'm going to do the, the board as well. And then I'm going to go around all my edges first, and then I'm going to come back in and distress the board as well. And I'm just using these chip brushes I got on Amazon, and I'll give you the link for those. You get a hundred of them in a box for a pretty good price. And then I'm going to take a rag, and I'm just going to go right around the edges of my heart just to distress those a little bit more. Next, I'm going to spray paint this coat hook with some oil rub bronze paint. Start attaching some hardware. I've got that little um, handle there that I already had, and then that's the oil rub bronze paint um, coat hook that I did. And I'm just marking my holes because I'm going to pre drill them. This is a great way to use just some hardware that you have or old hardware. This really did give it a nice vintage look. But you do want to go ahead and pre drill your holes. And then I'm going to start attaching these with some screws. And I just got some regular black screws for these. And then I'm just going to attach my um, coat hook on the other heart. I really like the way this one turned out. I'm just hanging it by my front door. Let me know in the comments what you think. You could do a lot of different designs with the bicycle chain. Okay, for this one, we're going to take this diagram, and I'm using five-gallon stir sticks, and you're just going to cut to the measurements that are on this piece of paper. And then we're going to cut at that V right there. We're going to cut a little diagonal, and I'll show you all how to do that here in a little bit. 
Okay, I'm just going to take a ruler and then I'm just going to go ahead and make my measurements on here and then I'm going to go ahead and take it to my saw and I'm going to cut these out. Now you could cut these out with a hand saw. I'm actually going to use a miter saw to cut these. Okay, and this, just, this little diagram is in the description below. Just go ahead and download it and print it. Okay, to get the V, go ahead and overlap your two pieces and then draw a line on the bottom to make them even and that's the line you're going to cut. Next, I'm going to go ahead and paint these, and I'm using Waverly chalk paint. I'm using um, mineral, I'm using cottage white, and then I'm using Barcelona beige. And I'm going to paint each letter a different color. And I'm just using a rag to paint these with. And you want to get it on the front, the back, and the sides on all these pieces. I'm using a rag on these because I'm still wanting the wood to show through, kind of give it like a stained look. I didn't want too much paint on them. Okay, next to assemble them, I'm just going to use some wood glue and I'm just going to attach each one of the letters to the um, other part of the letter. And we're going to connect all this on a board here in a little bit, but just go ahead and make sure that you get your glue off of here if it does ooze out because you don't want it to show. And then go ahead and clamp them. And then you're going to do that to the other two letters as well. And you don't have to have heavy clamps, just um, just some little clamps. The little pink clamps that you get at Dollar Tree, those are perfect for something like this. But do take some time to get your glue off of there because you will see it if, it's, if it dries on there. Next, I'm just going to take some little black paper brads. I'll give you the link for these in the description below. And I'm just going to cut the tip of them off because all I want is the top part. And then I'm just going to attach these with hot glue. Just kind of diagonal from each other. Kind of make it look like these have been um, screwed together or nailed together. Just gives it a little bit more rustic look to it. Next to assemble these, I'm just taking a piece of wood and I've given you the measurement for that as well. And I'm just attaching these letters with wood glue. Now you want to leave a gap in there to put something that represents an O. And you want to probably use a heart. That's what I'm using. I started to use a cookie cutter heart and then I changed up here in a little bit. But you want to go ahead and get those on there good. And you want to go ahead and clamp these with a heavier clamp. And then clean off your excess glue. And then keep going and attaching the rest of the letters. Then for the O, I'm just using this little corrugated heart that I got at Dollar Tree. Or you can use a cookie cutter. And I'm just going to glue this right onto it with some E6000 glue. When I'm coming up underneath the O and down underneath the um, L to attach these. Okay, then to give this a little bit more age look, I'm using the Waverly Antique Wax and a chip brush. And I'm just going to kind of antique these a little bit. Just kind of brush it on, make it however um, heavy you want to or however light you want to. I'm just trying to give it a more aged look. Hey, I really like the way this one turned out. I'm going to leave this up year round. Let me know what you think in the comments if you decorate farmhouse and rustic. For this one, I'm going to take these house shapes I got on Amazon and I'm just going to paint these with a matte black chalk paint on the back and all the sides. Next, I'm going to take four of the little Jenga blocks and I'm just going to paint those with the black paint as well. And you could just use a piece of wood. It doesn't have to be a Jenga block. This is just going to hold it up. And then we're going to attach these with some wood glue. So just take a little bit of wood glue, put it onto the back part of this, and you want to make sure that it's down right at the base. And do the same thing for all four of them. Next, I'm just going to take some scrapbook paper and I'm just going to trace my shape on it. Now go ahead and flip it over. You want to use the opposite, you want to draw it onto the opposite side of the scrapbook paper because these are not perfectly shaped, and you want to do each one of them 
trace each one of them because they are not all exactly the same. And then just go ahead and cut out your scrapbook paper and then we're just going to attach it to the front. Just going to attach it with some matte Mod Podge and just going to go ahead and um, glue it onto the base of the house. And then I'm just going to attach my piece of paper to the front of it. Now I got my paper a long time ago from Stampin' Up, but you can, if you want words on your paper, Hobby Lobby has a lot of scrapbook paper that has words on it. But just go ahead and make sure it does fit on there and it is flat. And then let those dry real good. And do that same thing for all the other three. Okay, next I picked up these letters at Michael's. They're just little wooden letters, and I'm just going to distress the edges with them with some um, gray chalk paint. And you can do it however heavy you want to. I'm just kind of lightly going around the edges with it on all three of them. It's just to kind of distress the edges. I'm just taking a nail file, and I'm just kind of rubbing it around the edges just to kind of get it a little bit more um, rough looking. Just kind of just distressed a little bit, and I'm doing that to all four of them. To tie the sides into the front, I'm just taking a stamp pad and I'm just going to lightly go over the edges just to get a little bit of black on the edge of the paper on all four of these as well. It just kind of distressed it up a little bit and kind of tied the black sides to the front a little bit better. Next, I'm going to start assembling it. I'm just going to go ahead and put the L on on the first one. I'm going to put a heart on the second one for the O and then the V and the E. Just kind of make sure you get them on there and they're all about the same length. So about, I think I put mine about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Okay, and then my heart, I got that at Dollar Tree. I pulled that off of another um, thing that they had there. And I'm just going to attach it right in the center. I'm going to put some 3D glue dots on the back of it just to kind of make it stand up good so that I can add some greenery. Now, if you can't get um, one of these hearts, you can use any kind of heart that you want to. But just use a heart for the O. And then just get that glued on good. Then I'm just going to take my greenery and I'm just going to stick it right down in the top part and glue it in. Okay, next to make my letters pop a little bit more, I'm just taking a little dauber and a gray ink pad. And I'm just going to go around each one of them just to kind of draw them out a little bit more. And that was pretty much the end of that project. I hope you're enjoying the video today. Be sure and give me a like. And then if you've made it this far, be sure and put a comment below. Hashtag love. Thank you so much. For this one, I'm just taking one of the Dollar Tree hearts and I'm just going to cut it in half with a foam cutting tool. Just be real careful with this. You don't want to touch your hand with it because it will burn you. But if you just real carefully go right, slice right through it all the way around, you can get this cut in half pretty evenly. Okay, next I'm just taking some red and white pillow ticking fabric and I'm just going to cover my heart. And I'm just going to put Mod Podge on it. And if you're using a stripe, you want to try to make sure that the point and the top part of the heart line up. And I'm just going to saturate it pretty good and then just go ahead and press it on there. And then I'm going to do the opposite side the same way. Just kind of stretch it as you go and it will be pretty smooth when you get done. Just kind of mold it around the heart real good and then go ahead and let that dry. Next, go ahead and take your scissors and just cut a little slit down the center of it so we can go ahead and form the point of that heart. And we're just going to use hot glue to glue this around and we're just going to continue to go all the way around pulling it tightly as you're gluing it. And it doesn't matter that it gets bunched up in the back because that's all going to be hidden once we get it mounted to our board. But pull it tight so that you do get the shape of the heart all the way around. And then we'll start trimming off some excess on the back here in a little bit. And then just continue all the way around the heart till you have it completely covered up. Okay, then to distress a little bit, I'm just taking some Tim Holtz Distress Oxide in the walnut color. And I'm taking a little sponge and I'm just going to go ahead and start distressing it a little bit. Just kind of testing it back there to make sure I, that's what I wanted. And then I'm just going to kind of start doing the edges. And then we'll come in here a little bit and do a little bit more. 
We're just trying to make it a little bit, a little bit more primitive looking. And you can put as much or as little of the distress on here if you want, or you could even leave it off completely. Okay, next I'm just going to take some jute string and I'm just going to attach it right at the top of the heart. And then I'm just going to kind of randomly wrap this heart. And I'm going to glue in spots in the back as I go so it does stay pretty snug. Okay, next to distress a little bit more, I'm going to take a little dauber and I'm going to use that same distress oxide and I'm just going to go right up underneath that jute. So pull ahead and pull it back and then here in a little bit, we're going to glue these on a little bit tighter. But I'm going to go under every section that has the jute wrapped on it. And then I'm going to wrap, go around the edges of it, the whole entire heart, a little bit darker. And then go ahead and start gluing a little, just a little dot of glue there to hold it in place. So that it does stay on that line that you just distressed. Okay, next I got this little plaque at uh, Hobby Lobby and I'm going to attach my heart to this. Now, first of all, I'm going to take that same oxide and I'm just going to go ahead and start distressing it. Just kind of rubbing it around there just to kind of get it a little bit more distressed looking. And then I'm going to do the edges too to get those a little bit darker. Okay, next to fill in those holes, I'm just taking two little brads. I'm just going to kind of cut them a little bit short so they don't go out the back side. And then I'm just going to glue those right into those holes. Okay, then to attach the heart to the board, I'm just going to use some E6000 glue as well as hot glue just to attach this. Just put plenty of glue because you do want to make sure it stays on good. And then just make sure that you got to get it in the center and that your points are up straight up and down. Okay, then up to cover up the sides, I'm just going to use some regular thicker jute. I'm going to start at the top part of the heart and I'm going to go all the way around the heart, trimming it out. That way from the sides you won't see it into the heart or underneath the heart because it is lifted off the board just a little bit. And that was pretty much it. That was pretty simple and easy. I love the way that this one turned out. If you like the primitive farmhouse look, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. This one, I'm going to take some of the Dollar Tree hearts. I'm going to spray paint them with an oil rub bronze paint. Now, they also have these on Amazon and clear. Next, I'm going to take some silver rub and buff, and I'm just going to take a cloth rag, and I'm just going to rub this onto my heart, kind of dabbing it around. And then I found out a little bit later as I was doing it, a little sponge works a little bit easier. But just go ahead and get it completely covered as much as you want, and do the front, the back, and the sides. Okay, next, I'm coming in with some gold metallic paint and a sponge, and I'm just going to sponge all over it until I get it to the color I want it. Now, I'm adding quite a bit of the um, gold, and then I'm going to come back in with some black here in a second. And I'm going to show you real quickly from start to finish. I'm going to go fast on one, starting using the silver with the sponge. 
Okay, so I'm going to start with my base coat of the silver. And then I'm going to go into the gold and into the black. I don't know about you, but sometimes when you're doing a project like this, it may take through the fourth or fifth um, item till you finally get your pattern going on how to make it look a little bit better. But this worked best with me if just starting with the silver, really getting it covered well, and then moving into the gold and then adding the black. This was quick and easy, and it really did distress these up nice. I really love the way that these turned out. And you can leave these up year-round. But these are just super simple to do, and they look so pretty. Next, I'm just going to take some jute, and I'm going to run it through the center and just tie a bow. This way, these will stay together because I did not glue them together before I started. Okay, I really love the vintage look on these. Let me know what you think. If you're enjoying the video, be sure and give me a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified when I have a new video upload. Thank y'all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'd love to hear in the comments what kind of decor you use in your house. Have an awesome weekend.